Hello everyone and thank you chair for the introduction. It is a great pleasure for me to be here. My talk today is about membranes for direct lithium extraction, a disruptive technology for EV boom. We are all hearing in the news about EV boom, lithium price jumped, lithium ion batteries, gigafactories, Tesla. So there are lots of news around us. Let's check some facts. In the last four years, the global lithium production almost doubled to 82,000 metric tons in 2020. And this is mainly due to 300% growth in EV cells. 50% fall in lithium ion battery prices and also rise of the giga factories, battery giga factories, almost 1000% growth. And according to benchmark mineral intelligence, if all of the 200 battery mega factories were operating at full capacity, their annual demand for lithium would be around 3 million tons. That's almost 37 times the 82,000 tons produced in 2020. At the moment, there are two main limitations for lithium supply. First of all, the vast majority of the world's lithium is found in the lower grade resources and is not economical and viable to extract, such as seawater, as you can see in the left picture. And at this point, on the right graph, which is called mineralogical barrier, represent grades of lithium which could be economically extracted. There is a strong uh, demand for a new technology that can shift the point left. The second limitation is that the current mining is carbon intensive and has high water footprint. As you can see here, the extraction of lithium hydroxide from brine produces at least 5 tons of CO2 and that value increases to around 15 tons of CO2 per 1 ton of lithium hydroxide. Water footprint for brine is around 470 tons of water per ton of lithium and that value for rock mining is around 170. There is a rapidly growing quest for new methods that can extract lithium directly with zero carbon and water footprint that can easily be applied at low cost uh, on a broad range of lithium feed quality. So there is a great investing opportunity, but the question is, what is the best technology to invest in? Based on our history and our studies, we believe that membrane technology is the best option. There is an analogy between water demand and lithium. This graph shows the water desalination technologies timeline and as you can see here, reverse osmosis, which is a membrane-based technology, has been evolving much more faster than other thermal-based desalination technologies. Currently, reverse osmosis has taken over almost 70% of the 13.64 billion dollars market and it is predicted that it will reach about 22 billion by 2028. Here is the historical timeline of membrane-based desalination technology. Um, osmosis phenomena was discovered in 1748 and almost for 200 years nothing specific happened until 1950s, when the first lab scale RO was reported. Two decades later, for the first time, RO pilot plan was demonst demonstrated in Florida. And then I was curious to know what happened in 1950s that made the RO a few decades later the dominant desalination technology. Um, 
I did a quick check on freshwater demand over the last 100 years, and I found in 1950s, the demand for water rose substantially. Back then, the industry was desperately looking for a new technology that can produce water at low energy consumption rate, low carbon footprint, with the ability to rapidly scale up with enough flexibility and modularity at low capex and opex. They then found membrane technology a, a great candidate with a great potential. Um, the same story goes for lithium demand. We have reached a point um, which a new technology is urgently needed for lithium recovery. We need a low energy consumption rate method with low carbon footprint and with scalability and modularity and low capex and opex. And history repeats. Membrane have a great potential to fill the gap. This is the time, we believe, to invest on this technology. Let's go quickly through the lithium extraction technologies. As you can see here, a few decades ago, thermo thermochemical methods were the main technology for lithium recovery from solid rock deposits. As the new underground resources were discovered, alongside with gradual increase in lithium demand, the lithium recovery from brine by evaporation has joined the club. It was around 2015 when the demand and environmental concerns for lithium extraction has begun to increase more rapidly. It was the time that industry has started to adapt itself to the new circumstances by impl implementing DLE, direct lithium extraction technologies, which are mainly based on the conventional sorption, ion exchange, and solvent extraction technologies. So, the, but however, the main question here is, can the current DLE addresses the rapidly increase in the demand and environmental concerns? And we believe the answer is negative. And this is a typical flow sheet of producing lithium carbonate from brine, which usually takes around 18 months. Um, DLE can replace many separation and purification stages in the production line and save times and enhancing the production yield. So what is exactly DLE? DLE um, technology refers to any physical or chemical processes that can selectively target and separate the lithium ions from impurities. Technically, we have two types of DLA. DLA rich feed, the left side of the slide, and DLA lean feed, the right side of the slide. In the DLA rich feed, impurities, labeled X here, are removed from the feed, whereas in the DLA lean feed, this is the lithium that are separated from the feed. Here is the three main DLE with TRL above five. In sorption technology, lithium chloride molecule in brine physically absorbed onto sorbent and removed from stripe solution. In ion exchange, lithium ion in brine chemically absorbed onto, into solid ion exchange material and swapped for other positive ions. In solvent extraction, lithium phase with adsorptive or ion exchange type properties removes lithium chloride or lithium ions from the brine. In, however, in membrane-based DLE, lithium ions are transported selectively through the nanochannels of the membranes by keeping the feed and outlet streams separated. Um, as mentioned, although the current DLE technologies have provided a solution in short term, they cannot address the ever increasing demand on lithium extracted with zero carbon. This is mainly because 
The methods suffer from several intrinsic limitations, such as brine contamination, need for a large amount of acid and base reagents, and also serious environmental concerns. However, membrane do not have the limitations, as there is no contact between the brine and permeate, which make them a great candidate to address the demand in the near future. Even though the membrane technology have shown potential, they have not yet considered mainstream. There are few bottlenecks for developing of lithium selective membranes. There is a need for high selective membranes. There is a trade off between lithium selectivity and permeability, membrane chemical, thermal, mechanical, long term stability need to be enhanced scalability and also cost are the the other two um, obstacles that needs to be addressed here is my research in lithium space as you can see here our research has three main pillars of materials process and market in material, we are designing new lithium selective membranes and sorbents. We also use advanced computational and theoretical approaches such as artificial intelligence and machine learning, molecular simulation, and quantum mechanics to discover new starting materials that can be used for designing lithium ion selective membranes and absorbents. We also involved in decarbonization of lithium ion production processes with modified or optimized flow sheets and also we are involved in opex and capex estimation we are also committed to reduce water footprint of the process process of lithium extraction by implementing water recycling systems we are also very keen to monitor lithium market by using AI and machine learning to forecast a stock price and also providing technical advices and consultancy for the technology developers. Due to time limit, I only go through our latest work in material part of our research. In order to make a lithium ion selective membrane, there are a few factors that must be carefully adjusted at Adam scale. They are nanochannel in thermal geometry, surface chemistry, environmental condition, and driving force. There are a few basic design principles that we implemented over the last few, few four years to create such a membranes. For more information, please read, read our article published in Nature Communication in 2019. Using these parameters, and the principles that we developed in our research group, we have created a few membranes for selective separation of lithium. This is the first generation of lithium ion selective vermiculite membrane that we started to work on in 2017 and we published its uh, results in 2019 in water research. What we discovered was that when we reduced the nanochannel size from above 1 nanometer to 0.4 nanometer, the ion transported in a zigzag fashion using the top and bottom wall surfaces. And we found that this is due to a spontaneous symmetry of breakage of charge. Uh, we also found that water molecules begin to form an ice-like structure as the size reduces, we think that the zigzag transport mode and ice-like structure of water are the main mechanisms for lithium ion selectivity in this particular case. In another project, we use Maxine to make lithium ion selective membrane. We found that apart from the nanochannel size and ion hydration shells, the material chemistry and different energy barriers inside the nanochannels play a more crucial role. We also um, did some theoretical study to see if creating the asymmetrical morphology 
gives us lithium selectivity. And we found something very interesting. We observed an incredible lithium ion selectivity. As you can see here, a non-lithium selective nanochannel turned into lithium exclusive by just simply making asymmetrical structure within the nanochannels of the membrane. Based on the theoretical finding, we have spent almost two years to make the first experimental prototype membrane with asymmetrical morphology in atom scale. As you can see here, the membrane showed a very prom promising lithium selectivity. Unfortunately, I cannot talk in details as we just submitted our revision. I hope it will be online soon. Using the principles that I just discussed, we used tannic acid as a gas molecules to make graphene oxide membranes lithium ion selective. This is the side view of tannic acid graphene oxide membranes filled with water molecules. The geo nanochannels are decorated with tannic acid which creates limited passable cavities and energy barriers for lithium ions to transport. We use similar principle to develop a lithium ion sensor using lithium selective membranes. The sensor showed a very good performance. Up to here, all of the membranes that we developed were the first or second generation. Here is our th recent third generation membrane, which showed an astonishing lithium ion selectivity. We managed to find a way to fuse two different nanochannels to make an asymmetric pore with altered energy walls. This, select, this is the selectivity of the membranes before molecular fusion, and that is the selectivity after the nanochannel fusions. In the next step, we added a specific ion trapper right next to the mouth of the pore, which boosted our lithium ion selectivity. And I hope this work will be online soon. In a nutshell, in order to make a lithium selective membrane, the first thing is selecting a right material and then tuning the morphology and surface chemistry of the nanochannels. Finally, driving force and environmental conditions need to be adjusted carefully to get a stable lithium selective membrane. I would like to acknowledge all of our mentors, collaborators, postdocs, PhD students, and also organizations uh, which supported our uh, research financially. Thank you for your attention.